Welcome to this bite-sized, memorable look at the world around us. I'm Jim from Nature's Work. Life in the Alpine environment is one of extremes. Temperatures are low, winds are high, and the growing season is cut down to an absolute minimum. Yet there's a whole range of alpine flowers perfectly adapted and suited to these extreme conditions. One striking phenomenon occurring is how plants of unrelated families closely resemble each other. So here we have the example of King of the Alps and Alpine Rock Jasmine and their lowland relatives, close relatives, King of the Alps, a member of the Borage family, and Alpine Rock Jasmine is a member of the Primrose family. Another striking characteristic is the diminutive size. And being small and low to the ground has a great advantage of being able to absorb ground heat, avoid drying winds, and there's also greater protection from the overlying snow. Adapting growth and shape is also an advantage in avoiding these strong winds and this harsh environment. Cushion plants are clonal plants and contour rock crevices and niches, forming a dense rounded canopy with tightly packed leaf rosettes. And then below these leaf rosettes, you have the, the stems are being protected. Moss Campion um, has demonstrated, or people have, have researched and shown that the temperature inside Moss Campion can actually be 10 degrees higher than the ambient air temperature above. It's also moist and more humid as well, which is a better growing condition. Another adaptation is frost tolerance. So plants which can perform metabolic functions at low temperatures will get a selective advantage despite the cost in terms of energy. And some plants are able to lower their freezing point to protect the cells from freezing, converting starch to sugars, which is a bit like salting the rose to reduce the, the, the freezing point in winter. And that process of making uh, starch into sugar allow supercooling. And when you consider that the growing season is between 12 and uh, six and 12 weeks in the high mountains, whereas in lowland areas, it's between 30 and 40 weeks, you realize there's a huge amount to cover in a very short summer. And plants will only generally photosynthesize above freezing. And species like the glacier crowfoot pictured here, have an ability due to this frost tolerance to function and reproduce and photosynthesize at minus six degrees centigrade, which is an incredible adaptation. Another adaptation is to have a long life. There's very few annual plants in the Alps and there's none in the Arctic due to the physically, uh, physical and the extreme environment. Uh, trailing azalea here grows to around 110 years. Alpen rose has been shown to grow and live for 200 years. And the names often appear in, or that long life often appears in the names of plants. So the house leeks, uh, their Latin name is Semper Vivum, which means always living. And then live long saxifrage as well alludes to this long life. Moss campion, as mentioned, is a cushion plant which adds new shoots each year. Individuals are known in the Alps to be up to 1.8 meters across, which are estimated to be about 300 years old. And the growth rates usually four to five millimeters per year. So uh, moss campion also another great adaptation is to have a deep tap root and you can see there in that illustration the extent of the root system which is far larger than the above ground shoots and flowers and in alpine plants having a large root system is a great advantage roots are useful for storage of water and sugars harvesting minerals from the soil but also anchoring. And a lot of the environments in the Alps are quite mobile. And so to have a flexible root system or a large root uh, structure is, is of great benefit. And the Schreutzer's bellflower 
photographed here have root stock of up to eight and a half meters and the roots will spread out about 70 centimeters away or, or wider than the plant itself above so it's a, a great extent um, and they have commonly a four to one ratio of root to shoot or root you know below ground to above ground uh, which is unusual for lowland plants. Snowbed species like the um, snow, snow bell here have this phenomenon, a well-developed phenomenon known as pre-formed flower buds. So they're formed at the end of the growing season in the summer, whereas usually they're formed at the end of the winter before the growing season. But it's a great advantage in that those preformed buds will, they start to, to heat up, metabolize, and they help to melt the snow around them and they, they come up and they're ready to function. So they're an early flowering species in the Alps, but it's a great advantage. Um, and there's a, a lot of examples of that in alpine flowers. Another great advantage is to be covered in, in hairs. It protects from the cold, gives insulation, it helps in the seed development. And as I've just mentioned, it, it, uh, with preformed flowers, it also helps with frost in the autumn. Um, the photo of the Edelweiss, you often appear, or they often appear to be out of focus. When you look closely, it's because they're covered in this incredible fine uh, mat of hairs. Tolerating drought or desiccation tolerance is important and there's several adaptations we'll cover here. Fleshy, waxy cuticle helps to reduce water loss and also wind damage. Succulent species, usually desert plants, um, they're fairly common in, in the Alps it's on dry rocks and, and exposed sites um, and they help to store water inside the structure. And also, um, you can see in the least primrose that the leaf rosettes have closed in and they're enrolled leaves, and that helps to reduce transpiration and water loss. If you'd like to know more, why not join me on a course in the Swiss Alps? Alternatively, you could purchase my book, The Alps, A Natural Companion. Just go to my website at natureswork.co.uk, where I have a range of nature-based playing cards available.